Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. In today's episode, we have something a little different. I'm going to warn you right now, if you don't like negative videos, you should just click off this one and tune into the one on Saturday that will be more PvP focused and have a better vibe to it. But if you are here for just all the content I make and you want to know what I think is wrong with the game and maybe how I would improve it, stick around and if you're Blizzard, I hope you're listening because I think some of these things are outrageous. So, here we go. The first thing that I want to talk about is quests. This is your main source of progression as a free-to-play player. First off, in the beginning of the game, they're pretty good. They do a lot for you. As you get further and further, you have to do more of them and more of them to get any sort of XP from them at all. They are gated based on the number you can do, but not only that, they're gated because they get higher in difficulty as you do more of them. They should not do that. This is the only free-to-play system that players have to increase their account progression. And by making it more difficult, the more and more you do them, and successfully do them, you're discouraging players from doing them. I think in the whole life cycle of this game, I personally have done less than 100 quests. Um, they're just awful. You're not doing anything fun, you're playing the same map, and it gets harder as you do them. So why would I want to do them? Currently, the best way to do them is to play them until they level up, maybe once or twice, and then sit there and do nothing and lose so that they lower in difficulty. That's awful. The best way to fix this, though, in my opinion, and the fastest way, is to just remove that mechanic. Why does it exist? Why are you punishing the players that want to play your game? This isn't like normal mobile games today, where most games are AFK, and when you're done with the progression you can do for the day, you turn it off, and when you log back on, you have a bunch of rewards waiting for you because you were farming AFK. It's a completely active game. There's no way to play this game AFK. Don't punish your players for playing the game. It's that simple. This is the worst system by far in the game, in my opinion. Um, well, maybe not by far, but it is one of the worst systems in the game. Take it out. Next, we have a lot of bugs. We have Bandit's Pick Lock not working in PvP. We have Maiev being taken out of stealth anywhere she's on the map. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. If a Dragon Tower triggers anywhere on the map, it doesn't have to hit her. It just has to trigger on the map. It's really obnoxious. Uh, it didn't exist in the last Dragon Tower meta, I don't think, so why is it here now? We have the fog bug, we have PvP disconnects, we have Dracosath killing Tyrion through shields and Murloc bubbles. There are a lot of bugs in this game. First off, where do they come from? I don't understand. These are things that get fixed and then are broken again in the next patch. They're things that didn't exist at all, and then when you update the game, they happen to break. So what's happening? Are we testing patches or are we not testing patches? I understand that it's hard to test everything, but when something like the pick lock talent on bandits or Tyrion and Murlocs dying through Dracosath attacks are fixed and then broken again in a future patch, are we really testing the patches? It's hard for me to believe, especially with all the bugs that we get. And while I know a lot of people are content with the state of the game, and they're just excited for new content, I'm concerned with the bugs and problems that the new content is going to present. It's hard to be excited about the content when the game itself feels mismanaged. Personally, I don't really have an easy way to fix this. My best, I guess, guess is maybe you could provide the content creators that you have under NDA, like myself, um, provide them with a test server. Let them test your game for you. I'm sure they will find bugs. Players like me like to play the game. We like to find bugs. We like to report the bugs. Please let us test your game. It's the easiest solution for everybody. The next thing I want to talk about is levels in PvP. Why are they not balanced? I don't understand. Actually, that's a lie. I do understand. It's to make money. You want to pressure people into spending money so that they can play the game that they want to play. And I get it. You need to make money. I think it sucks. I think maybe you should have gone down the cosmetic route, put emotes and skins for kobolds and different things behind um, behind a monetary value. Maybe change the map layout with art like TFT does, where it's functionally the same map, but it looks different. Let people change gold mines for themselves. Let them do a lot of things. Monetize the game in that way. But monetizing the game for PvP is awful. It locks people out of playing certain things in the game. Um, people can't test new units because they're not leveled up. 
people can't play against higher level people because they get waffle stomped every time they come up against someone that's level 10 when they're level 7 and 8 and sometimes even 9. It's not fun. In beta, you had 7 levels on a unit. You had a level for owning the mini, a level for each of the valor slots, so bronze, silver, and gold, and a level for owning each of the talents. That's 7. Pretty easy to get. Not anymore. That's not how it works anymore. Why are we not back at the old system? It's so much better. My solution, equalize the levels in PvP, or at least give us a mode quickly that will allow us to custom match, um, or a different queue that also gives rewards that is equal level so people can actually test their skill. There are so many players out there with more skill than most of us have that can't play because they just don't want to spend the money or can't spend the money. I think it's awful. It's bad for the game. Next thing I want to talk about is weird features that you remove from the game. This heroic mechanic where you complete all of these with um, with each family. Don't know why I can't click on that one. Anyway, these. One, two, three, four, five. You get rewards for doing it with all five. Very awesome. That is actually a super cool implementation to this game. It was on Onyxia. Why is it not there now? It was there during beta. Why did we take it away? That makes no sense. There's currently no reason to do Onyxia, which is a shame. Because it's a really fun fight. Do something that incentivizes people doing it more than once. I have done it once for a video once for killing it myself, and that is it. I haven't touched it since, don't plan to. I don't understand why there is not an incentive to do this more than one time. It's a fun fight. Use the fun fight you have designed to your advantage. Oh, another thing that's really broken with this game. Why is Deep Breath locked behind this? This is bad. A lot of players cannot get this. It's going to be the same when you lock Ragnaros behind the Ragnaros and kind of this level 29 and it requires you to play with another player in your guild, by the way. Take minis out from behind giant walls like this. Make encounters that are level 15 or 20, put them behind that wall, and then make the level 30 encounters and make them mythic. Call them mythic, call them heroic, call them whatever you want, but put something like gold or a skin or something cool and prestigious behind it that doesn't affect gameplay. Not a mini. The next thing I want to talk about is the new fairy dragon. Um, first off, it's cool that it's in a new family. Scenarian family is awesome. My only concern is that now you have pigeoned yourself or pigeonholed yourself into making more scenarian minis, which is cool. You should want to make new minis, right? But why did it just come out by itself? Now you have now next season has to be a scenarian mini or players will get upset. And then the season after that has to be a scenarian leader. And you can't make the scenario leader next because you need another scenario mini to fill out its family slots. Unless you're planning on changing how family slots work, which would actually be kind of cool, honestly. Um, but I don't think you have that in the pipeline. So you pigeonholed yourself into now you're making these new scenario units one by one. And it's going to be a long time before we catch up to, what, Alliance? How many units does Alliance have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So are we having the next 11 seasons be scenario minis now to catch up? Or are we just going to have a couple scenario minis and one leader and make minis for new things again? I don't know, but it seems weird that it didn't come out in a big update that has leaders already and a couple minis to get you kickstarted. I just think it's going to leave a lot of people with bad tastes in their mouths about it. But we'll have to wait and see and find out. And as far as Moonglade goes, it's not coming in Season 5. Um, and that discourages me. Because what I think they're going to do with Moonglade is release it a long time as, uh, sorry, alongside a Scenarian leader. Um, that is rough. Because you can't release it next. So it's not next season either, if they're doing that. Um, they don't have to do that. This is just what I think, my opinion. But... If you're going to release it alongside a scenario leader, you need to have a mini first because you can't have a leader without two minis in its family to fill the family slots. They won't do that. They shouldn't do that. They won't do that. So, we're at least two seasons out from Moonblade, in my opinion. I know, it's rough. That sucks. And also, in my opinion, I feel like Moonblade will come out before raids. So that means we're at least three seasons out from raids, which is not somewhere anywhere, or it's not something i don't know what i'm saying it's not somewhere you want to be um not where i want to be anyway guys that's a little bit of a rant 
I know I'm super negative. I'm mainly just mad about questing and kind of arc light surges too. Bugs. There's a lot I talked about in my uh, stream earlier. You can find that on my YouTube page or my Twitch page. It's towards the end of the video. Um, go look at that if you want some more context to what this whole video is about. But that's how I feel. I think the game's in a really bad spot. It doesn't feel like the devs care at all about it. Um, I'm, unfortunately, not in a hurry to get anything done. Can't even fix the small quality of life bugs that are happening. and It's just awful. I love the game. I want it to succeed. I think PvP needs help. I think PvE needs help. I think the game needs help. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're still enjoying the game. If you're frustrated with it. Um, all of your opinions. What you think could be changed. What you think is good. Tell me everything. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching. And like I said, next video will be positive. We're going to keep making content for the game until it hopefully does not um, just sink, crash, and burn whatever. Anyway, guys, have a good one.